Time to talk uh, business now. Chris Fletcher's here, the Deputy CEO and Policy Director of the Greater Manchester Chamber. Just like giving you full title this Thank week. Thank you very much. Just so the people know. Uh, no good problem. to see you again, Chris. Welcome. Big you, news yep. um, for us today is that uh, we might be getting this National Football Museum in this very building. Yeah. How would that play, do you think, think with the Manchester economy and business? I think it's absolutely fantastic. Anything at all that you can get into the centre of Manchester that will bring people in, especially in the current economic climate, has got to be good news. And I hope this really does happen because we've had a few things in the past two, couple of years that have sort of nearly happened and then they've been pulled away from us, things like the Super Casino and other things like that. This looks like it's going to happen and I think it's absolutely fantastic news for, for the city. Uh, and I think it it's, it's just ticks all the right boxes. It's 80%, according to Sir Richard Lease, when I spoke yeah. to him a little bit earlier on. Um, and Preston and Lancashire simply haven't got the money. No, And no. our council have, and yeah. there's a big building here that... Uh, I've been looking for something to do, shall we yeah, say, for, yeah, since yeah, 2002. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's have been great, some great exhibitions on yeah, here, but yeah. it needs something, doesn't it, to I, make Urbis, to give Urbis an identity? Yeah, you need, you need something. You need that real anchor point, though, that, that brings people in. They know what it is, and it also gives the building a new identity as well, which is, is absolutely fantastic. And fingers crossed that it really does happen, because I, I just think it's great news. I think it's something that's got universal appeal, uh, both here and abroad, uh, and is just another magnet to get tourists and visitors into the city centre. What do our pitch for being a whole city in the World Cup, any? Am I the Absolutely Willis? not. Let's talk about uh, things a little more depressing. Um, the low paid I'm reading today are the worst hit by the recession. Lots of people have lost their jobs, but people at the bottom end of the scale seem to be hit hardest. Yeah, the TUC have done a bit of research, and there's a lot of headline grabbing with uh, you know bankers losing their jobs and, and people in, in investment banks down in London being hit hard and one thing or another. Um, this report today from the TUC, there's some absolutely staggering figures in there, uh, and they just remind people about the depth and scale of, of what this recession has actually meant on, on yeah. people and, and the economy. I mean, it quotes here, for example, Woolworths, 27,000 jobs. It's a lot of people, A big isn't it? chunk of, of jobs in one go. Uh, and Clinton Cards, 2,100. Um, the, the number of shop workers, for example, it says that's claiming job seekers, though, it's increased by 76,000 in the last year. These are significant numbers, and I think what's happened this time around in the recession is, previously in the 80s and 90s, we saw major manufacturing businesses going bust, and you ended up with 1,000, 2,000 people losing their jobs. This time, it's been that steady creep, I think, a little bit, apart from the ones like Woolworths that have gone down in one go. But when you put those, those figures together, when you bulk everything up, there are some really frightening figures out there, and these are real people. This is the real economy that's the going on here. The question is, Chris, is there more to come? Are there more job losses to be announced? Unfortunately, I think there will be. Uh, even though we've seen the first signs of recovery, the first sort of glimmer of things improving, um, if historically you look at previous recessions, unemployment will continue to rise. Even if, you know, suddenly, like France and Germany and Japan have done and we get some positive growth and we officially come out of recession, I think that increase in unemployment is going to carry on. I wish I could say something different. No, and well, listen, up, you know, this is why we have you on, because you're it, you know. the man that's in the know. It's, it's depressing news, but it's best <laughs> it that is. people know it and prepare yeah, themselves yeah. for the future. Yeah. Well, the things that happen in the recessions is that businesses that are suffering tend to merge, and this is happening in the mobile phone market. Yeah, yeah. A tie between Orange and T-Mobile. Now, my concern... As a, as a consumer, is that if there are fewer people providing me with a service, competition is reduced and I can't get as good a deal. No, well, this is it, and this is where you frequently get the uh, European Commission stepping in and, and looking into various markets and saying, well, this is not right. You've, you've suddenly got the, the tie-up today announced between Origin and T-Mobile, and they've got 37% of market share, which is, you know, well over a third of the whole market. That's if a significant one, chunk. that makes them the number one provider, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, and um, I don't know where, how, whereabouts this deal is up to, and I would imagine there will have to be some scrutiny done uh, or over this in, at some stage. You worry then for consumers and prices? Well, I think part of it is... Well, part of that has, has actually forced the, the, the merger to take place because I know, for example, T-Mobile was up for sale. Uh, the current owners are saying, we can't operate in this market anymore, we need to do something with it. So, actually, it's a, it's a cause and effect of, of, of the recession. So, in other words, because it is a very, very competitive market, it's bringing these companies together... One thing to say, though, is once things ease up a little bit and we begin to get that economic growth, there's nothing to stop new players coming into the market. And we've seen that over the last couple of years. I mean, three yeah. is a relatively well-known name now. 
new kid on the block, really, but it's making significant inroads. And I think this contraction, there will be a further expansion in the future, but I think it's what they need to do in the meantime. There is still competition out there. So if, for example, they decide to you know, play silly beggars and really you know, mess the prices up, people still have that option to say, you know what, don't like this, we will go elsewhere. I think that the key thing is what they're going to call the company, I would it's going to be called Tea Orange. Yeah. <laughs> Torrens? Would you want to... Torrens. <laughs> Torrens. <laughs> good, it's always good, good to talk to A good northern you. name. A good northern name, ah, <laughs> Torrens. I've got my mobile phone with Torrens. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Always good no to problem. have you here.